Hi, my name is Ward Spangenberg. I'm a uh, delivery director with IOActive in Seattle, Washington. Today I'm going to talk about uh, PCI and what it means to Europe and how it's affecting operations in Europe. Uh, the first question you might ask is, what is PCI? PCI stands for Payment Card Industry. Now, that doesn't mean much. What we're really talking about are the data security standards, so PCI DSS. Now what these are are 12 standards requirements that are required by companies that process credit cards. Now we've got three different types of companies that do this. We have level one, level two, and level three merchants. So the merchant is based upon the number of credit card transactions that occur during a year span. So you have anywhere from uh, anything less than a million cards would be considered a level three merchant. Anything from a million to five million is going to be a level two merchant. Anything beyond five million is going to be a level one merchant. Now with level one merchants, those typically require what are called, they are required to have a third party come in and perform an audit. That's what I do. I'm the, I'm the auditor. So what happens is I have to understand all 12 of those requirements and then the sub points underneath those requirements. So we have things like understanding firewalls and the firewall rule sets to actual compliance regulations. So do you have HR? Are you doing things like background checks on your employees? Um, so it's a, it's a comprehensive baseline. And this is really important to understand with PCI. It's not the end all be all of security. It's the start of a good security program. So with why is this important to you? Um, the big thing is a merchant, a retailer, anybody who takes credit cards. This is important to you because it allows you to have uh, the, really the baseline, the beginning of a security program. As I said, the requirements. We can talk about requirement one. We talk about having um, network diagrams. It's amazing today how many companies don't, don't know what their networks look like. So one of the first requirements is really sitting down and documenting and understanding what your network is all about, understanding what your firewalls are doing, understanding what your rule sets involved in those firewalls. Are we protecting credit card data that's coming in and out through our web applications? Are we segregating databases properly between what's exposed on the internet from what's protected on the background? Now you might be asking yourself, well what does this mean if I'm a grocery store or if I'm a, uh, a shoe retailer? Well, you, you may not have a web presence. If you're a grocery store, you may not have a web presence, but you do still process credit cards. You've got you know a couple hundred stores and you may be processing credit cards. You still have to follow that methodology as to how do you protect those credit cards. Look at each store as sort of your remote branch. Are you protecting the credit card information locally at that remote branch? And then are you protecting in transit and you're protecting in store before it goes, and when I say in store, at your corporate headquarters, are you protecting it before you do your batch processing? So there's a whole, you know, when we look at PCI, it's spread, it goes across merchants. If you're processing credit cards, then it's really recommended that you actually understand what's required of it. Now you may question, so, okay, I'm interested in PCI, I think I process credit cards, do I need to go through the PCI certification process. Well, that's a pretty easy one. If you're a level one merchant, then you do. You have to contact a third party, and once a year, that third party will send an assessor on site or a group of assessors on site, and they will take and they will perform what should be a very exhaustive process. We'll cover that in a second. They should cover this very exhaustive process and ask questions and gather evidence. And at the end of that, they'll write what's called a ROC, or a Report on Compliance. Report on Compliance is then turned into your credit card processor. So your acquiring bank. They're the ones that when a credit card swiped in your store, they're the ones that give, give you authorization on that credit card. And also then they're the ones that move the money into your account after the sale has occurred. Now if you're level two, level three, or below, then you get get something kind of fun. It's called the self-assessments questionnaire, or those of us in the industry, again, let's shorten everything. We call it the SAC. Okay, now with the SAC, there's two versions of it. So the newest version just came out this year, and it's sort of the 1.1 version of this, the self-assessment questionnaire. Now, because it just came out, um, companies have the choice of doing 
compliancy to the 1.0 version or to the 1.1 version? Well, your first question is, what's the difference? The difference is the 1.1 is a lot more comprehensive and it's a lot more uh, reflective of what a level one merchant will go through. So um, the belief is that as level two merchants grow, I mean the whole idea is to grow our company, as level two merchants grow, they're going to become level one merchants. So the more comprehensive you are about your security, the easier it will be as your corporation grows to establish yourself as a level one, a compliant level one merchant. Okay. So let's go back to those level one merchants. So a level one merchant, once a quarter, they have this auditor come in and the auditor comes in and he performs, as I said, we hope a quality, uh, uh, comprehensive uh, assessment of your organization. Okay, what does that mean? Well, it again, it's the, the 12 requirements with the subsets of it. I believe it's 256 subs, uh, requirements total if you meet everything. Um, what should happen is, uh, with an auditor, they, for, they should first ask the question, and then once you give them the answer, then they should ask for proof. The, uh, the process could include sitting down with HR and going through with HR and determining whether, you know, whether the process uh, includes background checks on anyone who has access to credit card data. Uh, we can do sit down with the encryption experts in, within your company or the, your database administrators and exact review how credit card information is processed, so how it enters into the database, um, and then how it is dumped into the batch settlement reports that are then transmitted to the credit card companies, uh, usually close of business or midnight, whatever, however the business is, uh, is transacted to occur. So that's the comprehensive approach. Now, there are, you know, and the question that I regularly receive when I speak, it, uh, speak about PCI is, is, well, you know, we prefer, I don't know, we've had what we call checkbox auditors. Is that good? Is that bad? It's all about what risk you're willing and your company's willing to accept, okay? Uh, PCI is really, truthfully, a risk mitigation tool. Um, it's not going to be the end-all, be-all to the security for your organization, and it's not the... Uh, um, it's also not the, the stopping point either. Um, and it, as you'll see each year, there'll be new standards, there'll be new requirements associated. Uh, so by having, by having that growth pattern, we're going to at least encourage a good baseline to work with, but you, know, you need to continue to, to process your security. Um, now some interesting things about your rock. Okay, so you've passed it, everybody signed off, you're done. What happens? Well, once the rock has been submitted and the payment acquirer, your merchant bank, has accepted the rock as you're compliant, and there's there's some paperwork that's exchanged, and you get a certificate, and you can get you can say I'm PCI compliant. What happens if after that's all gone through, someone gets hacked? Well, the first thing that happens is is that you're told by your merchant bank to contact a forensic investigator. Forensic investigator, and there are a group of certain forensic investigators that are allowed to come in and perform an assessment. And the first thing that they do is they pull that handy dandy rock back out and they start looking at it. And they look to determine whether the compensating controls that were accepted were strong enough in terms of if the hack is associated to that. So there's important things to think about. Again, risk mitigation. Are you willing to accept the risk associated with a compensating control? Um, and so those are the things, you know, again, it's you start off, you've got a baseline, you get audited to it, and then you work from that. Um, so it's a, it's a good place to start. I highly encourage companies that are processing credit cards to, uh, to try to hold the standards of the, the PCI DSS 1.1 and hire an external uh, company to come in and help you determine your compliance level and work with you to achieve those. Um, eventually, everything will be moving to those levels. And uh, you know, the, the, the brick and mortar stores will be required to be just as safe as, uh, as an online company. Thank you for your time.